Hey, welcome back. Um, this is the first of the photo editing part of the Streamlit series. Um, so you should now have Streamlit set up and installed and have a good idea how to use the elements and widgets within Streamlit. So we're going to take this now a little stage further and start um, turning our application into a photo editing application. So at the moment, this is what my application looks like. And if we have a look at the code, it's very similar to what you've seen before. We've got our two libraries imported, Streamlit and Pillow. We've got a single function, which launches our application with a title, a text. We've got, this is our path of our image in the image folder here. We're using Pillow here to open the image. And then we can load that image into an image element on Streamlit. So this at the moment is okay, but it would mean if I wanted to change images, I would have to come back to my code and I would have to edit this every time, which isn't ideal. So what we're gonna do instead, if I bring this across, we're gonna use this element um, in Streamlit, which is a file uploader. So rather than us having to set the path here, we're gonna use the file uploader to do it for us instead. So I'm going to come down here and have a look. So this is where it's being used. So I'm going to take this from the example they've given. And bring that here. And I'm going to take out this image path now. So this one will upload a file into here. And then what I'm going to do is take that uploaded file and open it as an image. And let's see what happens there. Okay, so if we rerun this now. Okay, so we've got an error straight away here with... Um, okay, so the problem that's happened here is it's tried to upload the file, but we haven't uploaded anything yet. And the reason for that is the code here is running straight away. So what I want to do is I want to look at what the uploaded file is before we upload anything. So this here is just going to output the file to the screen. So if we rerun this, you can see at the moment it's none. So what I can do here is say, well, if the uploaded file is equal to none, then that would mean there's no file. So I'm going to change that to not equal to none, which means that someone has now uploaded a file. If they upload it, we want to open it and display it. Okay. Um, so now this is saying, I can reword this slightly. Okay. So if uploaded file is not none, uh, which is the same, this is the same as saying not equal to. Okay. Then we will get this. So let's have a look now and rerun this source file. Okay. So the error's gone now. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to browse the files. We're going to go to my images folder here, click on a new image and open. Okay, so the file's been uploaded and now it's been displayed on our page. Perfect. Okay, so we've now got it so we can upload any file that we like to our, our application. Let's actually add some functionality into this. So if we come across the streamlet, what we're going to try and add is um, a way to rotate the image. So first thing, we're going to need some way of inputting information. So I'm going to go down to here and look at a text input. Actually, just before I do that, I've just thought one thing we didn't do on the file uploader. One of the things you can do here, well, one of the properties is accept multiple files. We don't want to do that because we only want one image to come uploaded. If I remember right, there was a way of setting the file type. It was on the type. Allow array of extensions. Okay, so this is going to be useful for us because at the moment this is a little bit insecure because we could, in theory, upload documents and it would cause uh, this code here to crash if we didn't upload a image file. So we want it to keep it to an image file. So here's a property um, that we can set when we create this uploaded file. So I'm going to say type equals, and we've got to part it as an array. I'm going to allow them to upload JPEG files or PNG files. Okay. 
just going to double check that that works okay and then you can see now the extensions are clearly shown so it would stop me being able to upload anything else so it just makes it a little bit more secure okay so back to what we were saying we're going to do which was add a rotation so i'm going to go to text input and we want to take one of these here Um, we're going to expect, I suppose it only needs to come up if we've uploaded a file, so we're going to put it down here. This is going to be the rotation amount. Okay. And now, if I upload the file, Okay, now we've got this box here for enter the rotation amount. Fantastic. So once we've got that, what we're going to look at next is we're going to move across to the pillow library. Okay, so I'm on the pillow official pillow documentation. I've gone to the reference and I want to look at what functionality we've got available for the image because that's the one I'm using here. So this image object. I might just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so down here we can see all of the functionality that we can do with the image class. So going down and here there's a method I can run called rotate. So we need to pass it the image, whatever our image is called. We then put dot rotate and then we've got these as the parameters that we can set. So first one is angle, and that's definitely going to be the, the most important one in this. And we've got other things like expansion, center in it, translating, and fill colors. I'm going to just ignore those for the time being, and we're just going to focus completely on this. So this needs to happen when we click a button. Um, we're going to have the rotation happen, but we do need a button first. My button is going to say okay, photo. And then we're going to use the image. So my image that I opened, I actually called image. So that's what I need to refer to. Image dot rotate. And then we're going to rotate it by the rotation amount. Now I imagine the text that's going to come back from here is going to be a string. So good idea that we're probably going to need to convert this to an integer. And also once that's happened, we might need to set this again, but let's just test it first. So rerun the code. Okay, so even when we rerun it, it's remembered the file, which is good. So let's rotate it by 30 degrees. And rotate photo so you can see nothing happens here we didn't get an error so i think the rotation happened but it didn't display I think what we need to do is reload that image once that rotation happens rerun okay so we've got another image that came up underneath here this one should have been a rotated one though which it didn't on this occasion, right? Let's have a look. Okay, so the mistake I'm making here is that this doesn't just rotate this image. It actually rotates the original and sends me back a new image. So I actually get a rotated image that comes back from this method call. So we need to save the rotated image and then display it. okay there we go so now we've got that rotation happening so let's actually say that we want it to apply to here rather than putting a new photo down here so i need to be able to reference this element so i've got to give it a name so let's call it image holder okay, and that allows me then 
to go back to that reference to be able to change the element. So I want it to stay as an image element, but I want it to now rotate the image. Excellent. Okay, so we've got the rotation part working. What I would recommend you do now is to come back to the pillow and have a look at some of the other functionality that you've got here and see if you can um, if you can get them to work as well. So one of the, some of the ones, let's have a look which ones could be useful. I think convert could be quite a good one. Uh, there should be a flip, I think. I mean, it's transpose. Have a go at this one. I think this would be a ni nice one to go on to. So we've got one piece of functionality in there with the rotation button, but try and implement a transpose one, which will cause the image to either flip from right to left, or so like on a vertical plane or on a horizontal plane. Um, and that would be good practice after you've uh, completed this tutorial. Okay, and I will see you in the next one.